Transportation system is crashing and they just hit the entire financial sector. You have no idea who you're dealing with. Is there a chance we'll see a Die Hard 6? It's a question that has been lingering since the original Die Hard hit theaters in 1988. Technically, if you delve into the details, there have already been six Die Hard movies. The first one, based on Roderick Thorpe's 1979 novel, Nothing Lasts Forever, was loosely connected to a 1968 film starring Frank Sinatra. For those not obsessed with trivia, there are officially five Die Hard movies, with the last one, A Good Day to Die Hard, receiving mixed reviews. Since then, plans for a sixth and supposedly final film have been in the works, aiming to give John McClane a fitting farewell. However, a decade of setbacks and delays has cast doubt on whether Die Hard 6 will ever see the light of day. Let's explore the tumultuous history of this potential sequel and ponder whether it will eventually become a reality. Die Hard 6 has faced several obstacles that have contributed to its delay. The fifth installment, A Good Day to Die Hard, didn't fare well as a sequel, receiving negative reviews and being the lowest grossing film in the series in the US. Despite attempts to pass the torch from Bruce Willis to Jai Courtney as McLean's son, the transition didn't resonate with audiences. However, the film performed better internationally, and fans maintained their affection for Willis in his iconic role. In 2015, there were plans for a sixth installment initially called Die Hard Year One and later renamed McLean, intending to explore the character's origins. Unfortunately, the project has seen little progress over almost a decade since its announcement. Various factors have contributed to this standstill, including ongoing script issues and the 2019 Disney-Fox merger. More recently, Bruce Willis's diagnosis of frontotemporal dementia and his subsequent retirement from acting have added to the challenges, leaving the future of Die Hard 6 uncertain. Producer Lorenzo Di Bonaventura expressed in 2021 that the sequel might be dead highlighting the complex web of issues hindering its development. Lorenzo Di Bonaventura, the former Warner Brothers executive, initially expressed excitement about Die Hard 6 during the publicity tours for other projects in 2018. He confirmed the title change from Die Hard Year One to McLean and spoke positively about the script and the studio's response. However, by 2019, his enthusiasm seemed to wane, and he appeared less optimistic about the film's future stating uncertainty about the project's direction. Len Wiseman, the director associated with the film, also displayed fluctuating enthusiasm over the years. In a 2018 interview, he refuted rumors about Bruce Willis having minimal involvement, emphasizing that the elder McLean would be the main character. He even mentioned Willis's participation in selecting the actor to portray the young John McLean. However, Wiseman acknowledged the importance of having a solid script before starting filming, referencing the script issues that impacted his previous work on Live Free or Die Hard in 2007. This suggests that challenges in finalizing an appropriate script have contributed to the lack of progress for Die Hard 6. Die Hard 6, initially envisioned as Die Hard Year One, was planned to explore two timelines, much like The Godfather Part Two. The storyline aimed to showcase John McClane as a young cop in 1970s New York in a prequel setting, with concurrent modern-day scenes featuring an older John, providing a nostalgic callback to his gritty early days. This structure was designed to mirror the acclaimed sequel's approach, weaving a narrative across different timelines. The concept drew inspiration from the limited series comic Die Hard Year One, published by Boom Comics in 2008 and 2009. The comic, created by Howard Chaikin and Stephen Thompson, portrayed John McClane as a rookie cop in 1976 in New York, entangled in a terrorist plot during the Bicentennial celebration. The second volume continued the story a year later, exploring John's encounters with the Son of Sam murders and his meeting with his future wife, Holly Gennaro. While the film's script shared a foundational premise with Chaikin's series, it remained unclear whether McClane would directly adapt plot points from the comic or take a more original direction. In Die Hard 6, Bruce Willis would undoubtedly reprise his iconic role as John McClane. His on-screen persona is so intertwined with the character that it's nearly inconceivable to envision a Die Hard movie without him, a sentiment shared by producer De Bonaventura and director Wiseman. While Willis's involvement is a certainty, the return of other characters is not guaranteed. 
Jai Courtney and Mary Elizabeth Winstead, who portrayed McLean's children, Jack and Lucy, in previous installments, are likely candidates for a return. Bonnie Bedelia, who last appeared as Holly in Die Hard 2 in 1990, might be persuaded to reprise her role if the storyline involves flashbacks of John and Holly's courtship. The potential for cameos from characters like Reginald Vell Johnson's Al Powell, Samuel L. Jackson's Zeus Carver, Justin Long's Matt Farrell, or William Atherton's Richard Thornburg adds an exciting layer for fans. However, the most significant casting curiosity for McLean revolved around who would play the young John and Holly. Len Wiseman indicated in 2018 that Willis would play a role in selecting the right young actor. While names like Joseph Gordon-Levitt were speculated, no official announcements were made regarding the casting of these crucial roles. The Die Hard series holds a special place in the hearts of fans worldwide. In the absence of an official sequel, some fans took it upon themselves to continue the saga. Two years before Lorenzo Di Bonaventura and Len Wiseman announced Die Hard Year One, British author Ben Treblecook wrote an unsolicited sequel script called Old Habits Die Hard. The story is set in Japan, where a 60-something John McClane is honored by the Nakatomi Corporation on the 30th anniversary of the first film's events. However, he is thrust back into action when the Yakuza crashes the party. The script gained attention online, leading to speculation about its official production, fueled in part by Treble Cook himself. In 2016, he turned it into a self-published novel titled Old Habits. In a different approach, writer Eric D. Wilkinson purchased a full-page ad in The Hollywood Reporter in 2015. The ad, titled An Open Letter to Bruce Willis, Lorenzo D. Bonaventura, Len Wiseman and the makers of Die Hard, expressed unwavering loyalty to the franchise. Wilkinson and his writing partner pitched a story that stayed true to the character of John McClane, involving him fighting Middle Eastern terrorists inside a supermax prison while serving time for a decades-old murder he didn't commit. Although the ad was a publicity stunt, Wilkinson aimed to inspire the series' return to greatness, even if he wasn't hired for the job. The ad compared their concept to The Godfather Part II, a comparison that D. Bonaventura would later acknowledge. In 2019, the Walt Disney Company's acquisition of 20th Century Fox had a significant impact on the film industry. Disney not only gained control of Fox's extensive film catalog, but also inherited its ongoing projects. The transition brought about challenges, such as differences in policies on repertory screenings that conflicted with some theaters accustomed to showing Fox classics like Home Alone and Die Hard during Christmas. Concerns arose among film enthusiasts that Disney's family-friendly approach might lead to neglect or alteration of Fox's traditionally R-rated franchises like Alien, Predator, Deadpool, and Die Hard. While Disney didn't outright discard Fox's R-rated films, numerous ongoing projects were either cancelled, such as Channing Tatum's Gambit, or sold to other distributors like Tom Hanks' News of the World. Unfortunately, the McLean project was indefinitely put on hold and despite initial optimism about the script, it was eventually confirmed dead by Lorenzo Di Bonaventura in an interview with Polygon two years later. Even if McLean had survived the challenges posed by the Disney-Fox merger, it faced an additional hurdle with the retirement of its star Bruce Willis. In March 2022, Willis announced his retirement from acting due to aphasia, a condition affecting language centers in the brain. Despite being an open secret in Hollywood, Willis's health issues worsened after publicly disclosing his diagnosis. In February 2023, his daughter Rumor Willis revealed on Instagram that Bruce had been diagnosed with frontotemporal dementia, a challenging early-onset form of the disease. This update garnered significant support from fans and colleagues, highlighting Willis's enduring status as a beloved icon, even as his career took a downturn in the preceding years. Well, that's it for today. For now, make sure that you like our video. Please share your views in the comment section with us. Subscribe to the channel to get updated and do not forget to hit the bell icon to never miss an update. Thanks for watching the video and we'll see you at the next one.